bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in this class we are going to begin with chapter 2 of class 12 literature reader nagaland poem which is let me not to the marriage of true minds written by william shakespeare now we all understand what a great poet william shakespeare was and basically his he was very famous for writing sonnets what is a sonnet sonnet is a poem which is written in 14 lines so william shakespeare was very famous for writing sonnets he had written in totality 154 sonnets and out of those 154 sonnets this poem that we shall be reading is the 116th sonnet written by william shakespeare so he written 154 and out of those 154 we shall be reading the 116th sonnet written by william shakespeare which is titled let me not to the marriage of true minds now this poem revolves around the basic theme of love william shakespeare feels that there is nothing pure and special in this world as love according to him love is that guiding star which directs the lovers or the people who are in love into the right direction it acts as a guiding light it acts as a lighthouse which gives light to all the people who are in love so in this poem he has expressed his views his feelings his expressions on this feeling known as love so as it is written what do you understand by the word love how would you define it can you recall any incident when you were forced to question what love actually is so has there been any event when you were forced to question what love is now we shall read the sonnet below to find out the poet's understanding of the emotion called love as i told you we are going to read how william shakespeare perceived love to be what according to william shakespeare was true love so let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove he says let me not to the marriage of true mind admit impediments now this first line has actually been derived from the concept of christian marriages you know in christianity when two people get married in a church the priest who is continuing or who is there to uh, you know validate the wed wedding ceremony of the two people he asks the audience that if there is anybody who has any impediments who has any problem with respect to these two people who are getting married then they should tell it right now or else never to bring that topic up so this is a catholic tradition in which they ask the audience this question so william shakespeare says that i don't want to be the one who would admit who would bring forth any problems in the marriage of true people a uh, marriage of two people who have the true minds here true mind refers to who are in true love so he says that i don't want to act as an obstacle i don't want to come forth with any problem between the marriage of two people who are in love because love is not love which alters when it alteration finds alteration problems <laughs> and here alters means changes 
so william shakespeare says that love is not love that changes when one come across some problems or bends with the remover to remove remover here means the dangers or the love is not love if it bends if it comes across any dangers in life so according to william shakespeare he is nobody he does not have the authority to act or to come forth with some obstacle with some problem in the marriage of those two people who are in truly uh, you know in love with each other because according to him if love changes in the course of problems or if love bends in uh, you know in lieu of some dangers then we cannot call that feeling as love but if something like this does not exist then that means the two people are in true love and he is nobody to create a problem in the lives of such people continuing further he says oh no it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken it is the star to every wandering bark his words unknown although his height be taken so he says that oh no it is a never fixed mark he is comparing love so in this stanza the poet william shakespeare has used metaphor metaphor is that poetic device in which a comparison is made between two things without the usage of like or as so here he compares love with an ever fixed mark with something which is fixed at its place and looks on the tempest tempest means storm and is never shaken now what is an ever fixed mark that the poet talks about in this line it is a lighthouse we all know what is a lighthouse right we have all seen what lighthouse is so a lighthouse is fixed on its place it never moves it is never shaken no matter how difficult or how rough the storm be similarly the poet says that love also has the same qualities as that of a lighthouse it remains fixed at its place no matter how difficult the time for the lovers be no matter how many obstacles or hardships they are made to face they will never shake they are in love and they will always be together irrespective of the problems they come across just like a lighthouse so this is the first comparison that the poet makes moving further he says it is the star to it to every wandering bark whose words unknown although his height be taken star is the pole star so now he talks about the pole star he says that just like a pole star which is fixed at its place and it gives light to the wandering bark wandering means something that has lost its way bark means a ship or a boat so this pole star which is responsible for giving light to a boat or a ship that has lost its way that has lost its direction this pole star is very important for such a boat and although we don't know how important its worth is worth means the importance of something so we don't know the importance of this pole star although his height be taken even if we reach that much height you know we will never be able to understand how important it is or how important a pole star is for these wandering boats similarly the poet says 
that love also acts as a pole star for the lovers those lovers who lose their directions who lose their hopes in life it is love that gives them new hopes and new desires and new wishes in lives to live on it is love which does not tell everybody how important it is but only somebody who has been in love can understand its real worth so what does the poet tell us in this stanza the poet has used a metaphor and has compared love with two things lighthouse and a pole star he first says that lighthouse is very important because no matter how difficult the storm be a lighthouse is always fixed at its mark and is never shaken similarly love is also like the lighthouse which faces a lot of storms it faces a lot of problems and difficulties in life in the course of time but true love never shakes it remains fixed it remains stable and determined the second comparison that he draws is that a pole star gives light to a boat or a ship that has lost its way has lost its direction the importance of a pole star cannot be known by anybody else but that ship because it is just the light of the pole star that tells them which direction to go similarly love also acts as a guiding light to the lovers nobody else the people who have not been in love cannot understand how important it is how important and special and pure this feeling is but only those people who have experienced it themselves know its worth know its importance okay moving ahead loves not times fool though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass stump love alters not with his brief hours and weeks but bears it out even to the edge of the tomb so the poet further says love's not times fool love is not fool you know why times fool because this is a very famous and an old phrase in uh, you know english that with time people tend to forget their feelings so the poet says that this does not hold true in case of true love though rosy lips and cheeks here rosy lips and cheeks refers to the youthfulness or the freshness of the people so the poet says that love is not that feeling which changes with the change in time it is not that people fall in love in their youth when they are fresh when they are young and with his bending sickle's compass come now what is a sickle we have all seen sickle is a kind of you know a tool something like this which is used by the people to cut the grass to cut the crops so that is a sickle so the poet says that love is not something like this which can be cut by any sickle that means love is not such that can be destroyed or that can be forgotten or that can be foregone by any person it is not the case that only a person who is young or is in his youth is fresh is innocent understands the value of love no love is not a slave to time so it is not that love is only going to be with the time love alters not with his brief hours and weeks alters changes love never changes it is not that it is brief that love will stay with you only for some hours or for some weeks but 
bears it out even to the edge of doom. Doom, again, in the Christianity, there is a concept of judgment day, right? When everybody will die. So he says, the poet says that love is not something that will stay with you only for some time, only for a few hours or for only a few weeks. Rather, this is something that will stay with you until the judgment day. Till the time you are, uh, you know, on the verge of your judgment day, even after you die, your love stays with you. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. Now, William Shakespeare in the last two lines of his sonnet is actually making the biggest claim of his life. He says that if whatever I have written about true love, if there is an error in what I have written, and if that error is proved, if anybody proves me wrong, that whatever I have claimed, whatever I have written about true love is wrong, then I will never write, nor no man ever love. So neither am I going to write again, nor will I believe that anybody has ever been in love. So I am going to altogether forget about the fact that true love ever existed. So this, my dear students, was the poem. And now let us very quickly revise and recap the entire poem. So the poem which is titled, Let Me Not to the Marriage of True Minds. So the poet tells us that he is nobody to act or to pose an obstacle or to pose a problem in uh, between two people who are in true love and who wish to get married. Because according to him, love is not something that will change when it comes across any problems or will change with the dangers it faces. In the second stanza, the poet metaphorically compares love to two things, a lighthouse and a pole star. He first says that just the way lighthouse always remains fixed and is never shaken, no matter how tough the storm be. Similarly, love will also be at its place, will never shake, will never change, no matter how difficult the situation might arise for the lovers. Similarly, he talks about the importance of pole star by saying that a pole star is very important for a ship or a boat that has wandered, that has lost its way. It acts as it gives a direction to such a ship or a boat. Similarly, love acts as a pole star for two lovers who are in love because it acts as their guiding light. And just the way a wandering ship or a boat can understand the importance of a pole star, similarly, two people who are in true love can understand the purity and the feelings which are connected with love. In the third stanza, he says that love is not something that will change with time. It is not something that people fall into love only in their youth when they are fresh and a sickle can cut them, that it can be destroyed, uh, you know, with the passage of time. Love is not something that will stay with you only for some hours or some weeks. Rather, it will be there with you till your judgment day. Even after you die, your love shall stay with you. In the final two lines of his sonnet, he talks about the fact that if there is anybody who proves him wrong, who finds an error in what he has claimed about the true love, then he will never write again and will also not believe that true love ever existed. So this to you, my dear students, was the sonnet. Yes, so this was the sonnet, let me not to the marriage of true love. Now, let us discuss the back exercises of this poem. So, the first one says, Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. 
so what does the poet mean by true mind so here the poet means by true minds is the people who fall in love with each other or who love each other truly why is the poet not ready to admit any kind of hindrances in love hindrances hindrances problem why does the poet not wish to uh, you know put forth any sort of problems in love because he understands that people who love each other truly they don't deserve to be uh, you know put forth with any sort of problems because they have already faced and overcome multiple obstacles and difficulties in their lives and therefore the poet does not want to be one of them who wishes you know who puts up some problem in between such people why according to the poet can love not be altered so why can love not be altered according to the poet so according to the poet love cannot be altered because love is static according to him people who love each other truly are not the slaves of anything and no amount of changes no amount of problems can change the love and determination that people have within them for each other oh no it is a never fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken it is the star to every wandering bark so what does it refers to it over here refers to true love why is it ever fixed so here love has been called as ever fixed because according to the poet it does not shake when it faces any storms or any problems so no amount of change can be made or can be brought into the people who love each other truly what do you understand by the phrase wandering bark and how is the how is love the star to every wandering bark as i have already explained to you wandering bark over here it refers to those ships or boats who have lost their direction and love is like a star to these people who lose their direction because it provides them with a guiding light it takes them into the correct direction it takes them into the you know it tells them or teaches them or imbibes in them the feeling that no matter how difficult the situation be if they are in true love they can very easily pass that they can very easily overcome the problem if this be a, uh, if this be error and upon me proved i never writ nor no man ever love so what is the error the poet is referring to so the error the poet refers to is with respect to the claims that he has made with respect to love whatever feelings whatever high claims he has made for true love he feels that if anybody finds an error in that then he is ready to overcome his writing oh you know just let go his writing altogether what shall be the consequences if the poet is proved wrong so if the poet is proved wrong the poet is ready to give up writing and is also ready to forget that there ever existed true love between anyone does the poet seem to think he might be wrong have you ever been extremely sure of something in life when was it and were you proved right or wrong so this part of the question is obviously a very general question in which the writer asks you to write or think about some situation when you were sure of something in life and you know whether you were proved right or wrong then the first part says does the poet seem to think he might be wrong do you think the poet has any doubt with respect to his belief not in the least a poet like william shakespeare is severely serious and sure of what he has written that is why he's claimed it so big that he is ready to give up writing if somebody finds an error so that clearly shows his confidence in what he had written the poet has throughout in the poem told us what love is not 
Do you agree with his profound description of love? Express your opinions. Profound means deep. So the entire poem, the poet has talked about the depth or the extreme power that true love has. So do you agree with all the opinions that the poet has laid forth for true love? So yes, I totally agree with it. Now obviously everybody can have a different opinion. But if I tell you with respect to the poem, so according to the poet, whatever he had written actually holds true. According to the poem, two people who are in true love can actually overcome any sort of problem, obstacle or storm in their life and still shine to be like the stars. Also, since the poet has very clearly said that true love is not something that will vanish in a few weeks or in a few days. It is going to stay with one even after one dies. How has the poet described love with reference to the concept of time? So with, the, with reference to concept of time, as I just told you, According to the poet, love is not something that will be there with you only for a few hours or weeks. It is not something that falls on people in their youth or when they are fresh. Rather, true love is something that stays with one until the doomsday, until the judgment day. How is the central idea of the poem presented through different images? Now, what are the two images that the poet has made use of in this poem? The poet has made use of a lighthouse and a pole star. Now, as I told you, he has metaphorically compared love to lighthouse first because just the way a lighthouse is fixed at its mark and does not move no matter how tough and how difficult the storm be. Similar is with love. It will never get, uh, you know, swayed away by any problems that it faces. Second, it compares love with the pole star. Pole star gives direction, gives acts as a guiding light to a wandering boat. So this is also so with true love which acts as a guiding light to the lovers who are lost in love. And only those people who are in love can understand the importance and the value of true love. Okay, let us move to the next question. So use these words from the poem to fill in the blanks. Every time I meet him to discuss the project proposal, he alters. The meaning of alters was changes. So he alters it to suit his convenience. He changes his plans. She seemed very shaken. So she was very disturbed after she saw the disaster. Jacob was in Kohima a few days ago and is now in Shilong. He is a wandering spirit, somebody who is not stable at one place and keeps on moving. So, wandering spirit. The accused needs to admit, needs to accept his crime in order to be proved guilty. Yes, so in this poem, metaphor has been used. I have already discussed that with you. The poet compares true love with lighthouse and with a star, pole star. That was a metaphor. Now the next question says, identify which of the following lines contains a metaphor and which has a simile. Now remember, both metaphor and simile talk about comparison. The only difference that exists is, in simile, you will always come across words like or as. So either of these two words will be there in simile. While in metaphor, the words would be missing. Let us look at the first sentence. Shakespeare is a writer for all ages. There is no like, there is no as, so it is a metaphor. One of his contemporaries famously said that Shakespeare was like an upstart crow in borrowed peacock feathers. Like is used, so very simple, clear, it is a simile. Those happy smilets that played on her ripe lips, 
seemed not to know what guests were in her eyes. Throughout these three lines, there is no like, no as, so it is a metaphor. A beauty hangs upon the cheek of night, like a rich jewel in Ethiop's ear. Like is used, so simile. Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Again, like, simile. Love is an open door. No like, no as metaphor. So with this, my dear students, we come to the end of this poem. I hope the entire poem is clear to you. It has been explained. The back exercises have been discussed with you at length. So now I shall pause and we'll see you on in my next lecture with a new video. So thank you very much.